Он приказал немедленно расстрелять абсолютно всех. Иначе, если хоть один выйдет оттуда, проговорится в городе, и на следующий день ни один еврей не явится. The Nazi extermination machine sentenced Dina Pranakiva to death, but she managed to return from man-made hell to look into the eyes of the executioners and testify against them in court. Dina Pranakiva was born in 1911 in Chernihiv and moved with her family to Kiev in her youth. She was 20 years old when she married Viktor Pranachev. Children were born in the marriage, a girl Lida and a boy Vladimir. When the Second World War began, Viktor went to the front. He returned to the city after the Germans captured Kiev. Then he was just lucky. At first, the Nazis let the local residents who were surrounded go home. On September 27, an order of the German command began to be posted in Kiev, ordering the Jewish population of the city to appear at the designated collection point with documents and valuables by 8 a.m. on September 29. For failure to comply with the order, execution was expected. On September 28, Dina went to her parents, who asked her not to leave them until it became clear where they were being relocated. In the morning, she and her loved ones joined the endless line of people walking towards Degdyarevskia Street. Those who watched the procession, standing on the sidewalks, sometimes dared to shout, You will be shot. But from the crowd was heard in response, But who will fight with women and old people? Before they came to the fence of the old Jewish cemetery, Dina also did not believe that they were being led to death. But anti-tank hedgehogs and a wire fence began there. People who crossed this border were not allowed to go back. After 50 meters after the beginning of this corridor, the visitors were ordered to hand over valuables and products, then they were stripped of their outerwear. Those who hesitated were severely beaten. Then people were driven to the playground where they were stripped naked. Then they were sent to ravines, from where shots were fired. When the newcomers realized that they had only a few minutes left to live, it was no longer possible to escape from the trap. Under the blows of police batons, Dina lost her relatives. And suddenly, from somewhere far away, my mother's voice rang out. Daughter, you don't look like it, save yourself. Dina understood what her mother wanted to say. The husband's surname in the documents and not the brightest appearance left the woman a chance. Her heart was bursting with pain, but her children were waiting for her at home, and for them it was necessary to fight for life. Dina managed to imperceptibly tear up her passport, which indicated her nationality, after which, with a trade union ticket and a workbook in her hands, she began shouting in Ukrainian to be escorted to the commandant. When Dina was asked what she needed, she said that she was not Jewish and got here by mistake, seeing off colleagues. The Hitlerite waved him off and ordered Dina to step aside, sit on the ground and wait for the evening. About 30 people gradually gathered like her. All day they had to watch people being taken away to kill. When people realized what was waiting for them, not everyone could stand it, they went crazy in minutes. Dina, looking at this endless deadly stream, waited for her fate. In the evening, an important German official appeared, who asked what kind of people were sitting on the sidelines. Having learned that we are talking about those who got here by chance, he said, shoot everyone, otherwise they will tell about everything in the city. They were pushed to the edge of the cliff. When it was her turn, Dina rushed down a moment before the shot sounded. Falling on the corpses of those shot earlier, she pretended to be dead. Soon the Nazis and the police began to bypass the line to finish off those who were still alive. A German submachine gunner approached Dina, hit her with the toe of his shoe, stepped on her chest, and then on her wrist. The woman continued to lie motionless. After that, the German left. A command followed from above, cover them with earth. Earth and sand rained down on the bodies. Dina was lying face up, and the sand began to make it difficult for her to breathe. She endured with all her might, but when she felt that she was suffocating, she decided that it was better to die from a bullet than from suffocation. Dina started to get up, expecting to be discovered. But the police and the Germans were no longer there. Until dawn, she was looking for a way out, but she couldn't do anything. Only on the third day she managed to get out of Babi Yar. 
she asked for help at the house of a local resident without saying where she was actually coming from. She received her cordially, but as it turned out, quietly sent her son to the Germans. Soon a Hitlerite appeared, to whom the Ukrainian woman joyfully informed, Officer, she is Jewish. Dina was again sent to the place of execution. The Nazis, for whom executions have become a routine, nevertheless relaxed their vigilance. She and other women were put in a car and taken somewhere. Together with the nurse girl who was inside, they decided to jump off at the right time. The driver did not notice their jump. Dina explained to those around her that the German driver who had taken a lift refused to stop for her, so she had to jump. After that, she managed to escape. It was impossible to return home. Together with a new girlfriend, they hid in a dilapidated factory. One day the Germans came there together with the engineer of the enterprise. Dina was noticed, but the engineer mistook her for a factory worker. Naturally, the woman did not try to convince him. Dina was placed in an army barracks, as she explained that her own house was destroyed. Through new friends at the company, she was able to get new documents in the name of Nadezhda Savchenko. Her life in occupied Kiev was full of trials. Dina's own brother, a Red Army soldier who escaped from captivity and returned home, was given to the Germans by neighbors. The guy was shot. Dina's husband was taken to the Gestapo in 1942. He was suspected of collaborating with the underground, demanded to tell where his wife was hiding. Having failed to obtain any confessions, the man was shot. When it became very dangerous in Kiev, Dina managed to get a pass and get out of the city, joining the troupe of the mobile theater. The nightmare of occupation for Kiev ended in November 1943. When the Nazis were pushed further west, Dina Pranakiva began searching for her daughter and son. And in March 1944, she found first Lita, and then Vladimir in orphanages. In January 1946, the trial of Hitlerite criminals who were accused of committing atrocities on the territory of the Ukrainian SSR took place in Kiev. Among the prosecution witnesses was Dina Pranakiva, one of the few survivors of Babi Yar. Her testimony left no doubt as to what sentence the defendants deserved. On January 28, 1946, Colonel of Justice Terenty Satenko, presiding at the trial, announced the verdict according to which twelve Nazi executioners were sentenced to death by hanging. The next day, in the presence of 200,000 people, the sentence was carried out. Two decades later, in Germany, in the city of Darmstadt, a case was considered against former German servicemen suspected of involvement in the mass murders in Babi Yar. The defense of the accused was not satisfied with written testimony, and Dina Pranakiva went to West Germany in person. And there in the courtroom she met with the same German officer who sent her to be shot to hide the secret of mass executions. The handsome German believed that the past would not catch up with him. But he came for him in the form of a woman who returned from hell, created by the hands of people. Humane German justice did not envisage gallows, but the Nazi received the stigma of a murderer and a prison sentence, thanks to the testimony of Dina Pranakiva. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in such a format, write about it in the comments. Friends, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.